rickmothersmother.com with the weekend market analysis for the weekend of February 24th and February 25th, 2018. We're going to begin by taking a look at the monthly chart. And by the way, I have to confess, as I looked at markets, cryptocurrencies, general markets across the globe, I have to admit it's very, very confusing, at least for me personally, to try and discern the direction. For some reason, the charts are not as clear. And hope you don't mind me confessing that up front in the sense that lots of short-term issues. Long-term though, if we take a look at the U.S. markets, for example, we can see here the Dow, S&P 500, and the NASDAQ all continue showing that they are trading well above 69.1, which means that we have to assume that the market is stable to bullish as long as the monthly RSIs are above 69.1. And I should have said that I'm going to break down this video in two parts. Pretty much it's going to be from the bullish argument and then the bearish argument. Like I said, it's not the easiest read as far as I can tell from my own perspective. Now, so another bullish concept other than the 69.1 is the potential for the market to break out beginning as early as next month. So let's assume that if this is confirmed as a down month, so if, if February is confirmed as a down month and we break out after one month of rest, that becomes very, very powerful in terms of indication of intent. A one month rest would be similar to this time period here where we had one month rest which is the minimum requirement and once we broke out we had a chance of staging a very good run for a period of many months similar to this period here where we had one month of rest which is the minimum we broke out and of course we had another run so as we pull back in February and the market is regaining most of the losses, the idea, the concept, the understanding that if the market is to break out, then a fresh breakout would only indicate that the market wants to record higher price levels. Now, if you take a look at the S&P 500, and this is a five-year monthly chart, those who are new to the concept of 69.1, let me just give you a brief explanation of this. We can see here in 2013, we went above 69.1, coinciding with this price movement. Pretty much other than this level here where we reclaimed the 69.1 level and here, we can say for most part of that period, the market stayed above 69.1. It's only until it breaks down below the 69.1 threshold here, we can say there, that we start seeing a pullback. And so you can see since early 2017, the S&P 500 moved above 69.1 and we pretty much been on an upswing and markets been able to recover quickly after every pullback. So as long as we are trading above 69.1, this becomes and remains one of the biggest bullish technical, I guess, considerations one needs to consider whenever they're trying to decide which way they think the market might be going. If we take a look at the Dow Jones, and this is a five-year weekly chart, this is potentially one of the most bullish things to consider. This was the top side resistance line on the Dow and this is actually similar with the S&P 500 and the Nasdaq also. And what we see here is once we broke out in November of 2016, we went above this blue line and since then the market has come back to test the blue line here for this lows and the market recovered back to new highs. 
And here again, we are doing the same thing. We've gone below the line and back above it with the uniform action, which generally tends to mean that the market is going to have to test recent highs, if not break out, as long as the line holds. Now, of course, we know that if the market goes on to break back below the blue line, that becomes a sell signal. Now, there's also something else that is very important, and it is the concept of RSI 50 support which gave us those lows and the market did go on to test the highs and actually move above the highs tested the highs and broke out again here uniform activity below RSI 50 back above it for these lows and a recovery market would go on to test the highs and actually broke out and so we are seeing the same thing here we came close to RSI 50 we held above it, which again brings back the bullish potential for the market to test the highs, if not break out. And again, this is true for the NASDAQ and for the S&P 500. Now, if we take a look at the NASDAQ, and again, it's true for the Dow and the S&P 500 also, coming off the lows of February 2016, this is where we see this RSI movement and the market recovers. We haven't been back to those levels since. Take that information, draw our uniformity support line. And I'm going to include a link about this concept called uniformity, which is a method researched by yours truly we can see from this blue line we bounce with uniform activity we also hold at the 30.9 level 30.9 being the other side of 69.1 uniform activity below the line back above it we also hold the 30.9 level with uniformity and recently here perfect double bottom we hold the blue line with uniform action and also we hold above 30.9 twice. And of course, we can see the market has responded to that. So all this has been bullish, remains bullish. And if that is what is controlling the market, like I said, then the market has a chance to test recent highs, if not break out. Now, we can flip the script a little bit and now take a look at bearish considerations or what could actually stall the recent bounce so let's take a look at that but remember because we've seen the monthly charts look strong and the weekly charts look very strong we have to assume that they are controlling so net net they con they remain controlling until the weekly and the monthlies start turning down the bigger time frame tends to win over the smaller time frames. Now let's take a look at some of the bearish considerations and things that might stall the recent bounce. Number one, on this daily chart, there's a line that is now going to be used as a back test. test. In fact, let me zoom in to the one year daily. From this one year daily chart, we can see that the NASDAQ did close back on the underneath side of this line. So short term, if this is confirmed as where it stalls, then we can anticipate a reason for the market to start pulling back. Now that's one view. The other view, And remember, these are not the strongest views because the weekly and the monthly continue to be strong. A break here brought the market lower. And now if we use our uniformity principle, we are coming back to test that level. Don't forget that this level here, even with another day to the upside or so, we are still coming back to test the 61.8 level. So if the market is rejected around current levels, we can reasonably expect a pullback. 
Now, keep in mind, I should note here that we had a good session on Friday, which is consistent with the RSI for the S&P 500 moving above 50. So no surprise with the magnitude of Friday's move because we moved above 50, which means that should we stall as we begin the new week back below 50, you can expect to see a big down day. Same is also true with the Dow. The Dow had a nice session, up about 1.3% because it moved above RSI 50. Should we drop below RSI 50, expect to see more than a 1% drop into the close. If we take a look at the Dow hourly, we can see a reason here. Now remember now we are considering the bearish side of this market right here you can see that we've come back to the top side of this wedge on the hourly RSI. So depending on which way we break, if we can push above this wedge, that's bullish. If eventually we end up breaking below the wedge, that would be bearish. So as we begin the new week, it's just something to consider that if this is where the market stalls, then we can expect that the next swing trade should be to the downside based on if this is where the market is rejected. Also one other thing we can consider is if you take a look at the intraday high there and the intraday low, we are back to test. Here was the 61.8 level and the market did respond with that by being rejected and so we could also potentially be testing the 61.8 level again. It's something to consider. And if you take a look at the Dow 2 hourly chart, you can see that we are coming back. This was the break. Consider that as the break that began this slide here. And of course we had a big drop after that. So we are coming back to test that level on the hourly and if this is confirmed as resistance, then we can anticipate that the market is poised to pull back. And if we can clear the same level, then this is a market that truly wants to test recent highs. So I trust you can see why I personally not sure which way the market wants to go. And I'll let the market decide. For example, if we go back to that Dow hourly chart in the short term, this wedge should determine our next meaningful direction because if we can clear this level and move higher that would be bullish and if we end up breaking below that level then that would be bearish net net the market should be stable to bullish because the monthly chart for the s p 500 dow and nasdaq continue to trade above 69.1. Now this concludes the free part of this video. Otherwise, the rest of the video is for, for Moade.com paid subscribers. I'll be taking a look at commodities, other US market sectors, and also take a look at cryptocurrencies. Otherwise, enjoy the rest of your weekend. And for the rest of you guys who are paid subscribers, let's continue on.